Hi everyone, welcome to Code DIY. In today's video, we're going to dive into the exciting world of text to speech APIs. So, what we're going to do is we're going to build our own text to speech API using Fast API and Amazon Poly. If you're new to Fast API, do not worry. This tutorial is beginner friendly and we're going to cover every basic thing you need to know on how to go about setting up a Fast API project. So, without wasting our time, we're on the Amazon Poly page. If you need to try, try out Poly and you kind of want to want to know what poly looks like or sounds like you can try this here which is on the aws management console all you have to do is just type poly and it's here and also you can check out the documentation which gives us an overview of how to use poly with the aws cli but in this example we're going to be doing things programmatically so let's start by setting up our project the first thing we'll need to do is set up a virtual environment for our project dependencies so virtually in vvm and once we get that done we're going to install all dependencies needed for this project so first i need to install um i need to install fast api i also need to install uvcon which is the server we're going to be starting or running our fast api project with and also boto3 boto3 is an amazon client to make requests to aws so it seems I have not activated my virtual environment. So I'm going to do that now with source VNV bin. That'll be activate. So now I'm going to run this command. Activating this kind of ensures that all our dependencies are installed in our virtual environment and not globally or not a global user installation. So I guess that's that. So we we've already installed this before that's one of the reasons we're installing the cache station so i guess why this is installing we can move forward and one we're also going to be making use of virtual environments so to do that we need to create a dot env file here which will be dot env so while this is installing i'm going to create my virtual environment so to to make use of AWS Boto, we're going to need to pass in our AWS credentials. So for that to be done, we need to create our own AWS credentials. So I'm going to have two credentials, which is my access key and my secret access key. So AWS AK access key and AWS SAK secret key. Now, to create your access key and secret access key, you need to do that from the AWS Management Console. So I'm going to go to IAM. So I'm going to go to IAM and from IAM, I can create my users. I can create my policies and rules as to how I'm going to make requests to my AWS account or my AWS service. So now I have two users here that, and I'm going to go for the developer user. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the security credentials and in the credentials, I'm going to create a new access key for this. So now it's asking if I'm going to, to use in the CLI local code, AWS running on compute service. I'm going to use local code since I'm using this with the body three client. So I'm going to go to next. I'm going to create my access key and this is my access key so i'm going to take that here and i'm going to paste my access key here and i'm going to also take my secret access key and paste it here so with that we can start we can keep our environmental variables and credentials safe so to use environmental variables in fast api we might need to install an extra dependency which is from pydantic so that'll be pip install pydantic and that will be dot env great so this is going to install pydantic dot env which is um a dependency we need for this project so now that that is installed i guess i can start working on my projects and start creating my code so the first thing that needs to be done is this we need to create a configuration file called config.py so in this config.py i'm going to be um, setting up my environmental variables and files and configuration settings for my fast api project so 
first i'm going to import from pydantic import base settings good and now i'm going to need to create my settings so from class settings so i'm going to inherit from base settings and i will need to specify my aws keys which will be aws um i think i can call this aws ak which i'm going to define as a string and i'm going to also call this aws sak please you should note that they are meant to be similar with the names we have here which is why i'm using this so to make things kind of easy for us i'm going to use a virtual environment so lastly i'm going to be setting my config which is an inherited class so emv file will be emv so i'm telling this configuration to check this dot emv file for my credentials here so that's done now i'm going to need to have my file which will be um i think i can call this main.py main.py is where we're going to have our code and our in fast api project so first i want to start by importing uvcon which is our server and i'm going to import fast api so from fast api import fast api and to create our application that will be app equals fast api and i'm going to then create a simple okay let's do app.post that'll be um app.post and dev async dev i'm going to call this function get audio so it seems github copilot seems to be messing with what i'm trying to do but then i'm going to return this which is return a message hello world so we need to ensure that this is working and our server is working so i'm just going to start the server in my project with uvcon so if name equals name that'll be uvcon.run for my app i'm going to use um the default host of that'll be 0 0.0.0, .0 and great lastly i'm going to specify my port number and i want this to run on port 80 80 and i also want reload to be set to true so what this does is if at any point in time we end up making changes to our project reload is going to ensure that our changes are reflected on the app app so we can then start our project with python main.py okay it says you must pass the application as an import string to enable reload or work has so which is actually correct i need to pass the application so i'm going to pass the application as main app i'm referencing this file and i'm referencing the app variable so python main.py good so to test that this works i'm going to go to localhost 8000 forward slash docs fast api as inbuilt docs with swagger okay it's not 8000 rather we're using 80 port 8080 so i guess that's a mistake on my end so with this we can see that there's a push request that says we can get audio so that's what i called so since that works now let's get started in creating our audio our text to speech api rather so the first thing i need to do is i need to get get my credentials from this config file so i'm going to define a function that says def get settings and what this will do is it will return okay i need to import my configuration i'm going to import config great so return that'll be config dot settings now while we're returning config.settings, config.settings looks for a file. So we're, we're performing like, um, I would say a file operation here. So to make this once and not repeated, like we do not want every single um, request to start making, um, 
we do not want every request to start making um checking for files rather we don't want we want this to be a one-time thing i'm going to i'm going to put it that way so what we're going to do is we're going to make use of um area uh, lru catch so with lru catch this ensures that this our function is only one run once so i'm going to do lru catch so this is more of a trick to kind of um ensuring that we have a very well a very good application that performs well in terms of speed so that's that's why i'm using this it's not you do not necessarily need it in every project but we're just going to be using it for this one so i guess that's that so now that this has been defined we can then decide to get our settings so but before we do that i'm going to define a model a pridentic model which is text so i'm going to also need to import my model i would say from pidantic say import base model so with this we inherit the pidantic base model and we then create our class okay something seems to be missing which is a, okay that's great so for this i'm going to pass in my content which will be the content of my text then i'm going to need to specify an output format so i want the default output formats to be mp3 but or maybe i should let our user specify the default output format so since this is a post request we can then tell our post request that if we're going to be receiving any data it has to be of this type text so to do that i just need to pass this as an as a parameter so text text so to, to ensure this is working i can then do something like um return i think right return text dot content i hope that works so well, we can decide to just reload this and we'll try this out and execute so that works so we got our text or content back now this is the important part of the video we're going to make a request to bottle 3 using we're going to make a request to aws poly using bottle 3 so let's pay attention to this so first i'm going to import bottle now that now that i have bottle imported I'm going to need, to need to initialize the bottle client. So I'm going to do this. Client equals bottle three dot client. In some cases, you might need to initialize this outside this request because this is just an example. That's one of the reasons I'm uh, initializing this here. So client, not client, rather, but poly. We need to specify the name of the service we're trying to make our request to. That's why we're using poly. And after this, we're going to specify our AWS keys, which is AWS access keys. Um, underscore ID, which will be equals to good. So AWS underscore access key, which will be equals to get settings to AWS AK. AWS to create access key. So what this does is this basically references these variables. And these variables and credentials have already been specified here. So with this, this kind of ensures that our client is initialized. So that's how that works. Now, how do we make a request to bottle to bottle to poly rather? So we're going to do something called client.synthesize speech. Synthesize speech. So this is how it works. When we call the client.synthesize speech, we need to specify the text. We need to specify the output format and we need to specify the voice ID. So the text 
was specifying its text or content, which is the content being passed from the push request. The output format is the MP is the output format we are going to also specify, which is MP3. And the voice ID is going to be the I the type of voice we're using. So if I go back to the AWS Poly documentation, we can see that we have a section that says um, voices in Amazon Poly. So we have different type of voices. We have the Arabic voice. We also have English voices. So um, the voice here is Joanna. So I'm sure somewhere deep down, if we check, we're going to see Joanna. So Joanna is English US, but I'm not going to be using Joanna. I want to use um, Emma or maybe Brian. So I'm going to take Brian. Now passing brand over here. So with this, this basically takes this text and the output formats we specify and it returns a voice for us. So I'm going to call this results. And once we get a results, we can then get our audio from the results. So audio equals results audio stream dot read. So there's something I want to do first. We're supposed to return the audio stream as a response. But before that, I'm going to be writing the file to our directory just to ensure that it works. So one thing I'm going to do is this. I can specify with open. That's great. GitHub Copilot gave me a suggestion. which says with open audio.mp3. We're writing it as bytes and we're taking this audio and we're passing it here. So we're creating an audio.mp3 file that will contain our audio. So to be sure this works, we're going to try this out. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to reload. Now I'm going to try this out. So I'm going to specify a text that says, this is a text read by Brian from Polly. And for our performance, we can decide to specify WAV or OGG, but I'm going to want to use this as an MP3. So MP3, and I'm going to execute that. And it seems something is wrong. It says Poly has no attributes synthesized speech. So Poly has an attribute called synthesized speech. So the problem is I probably spelled this wrong. Synthesize. Good. I guess this is how it's spelled. Yes, synthesized speech. So with that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to make a request again. And once I do that, I can see that I have my audio.mp3 file here, which has already been, been created by Polly. So I'm going to open this in a folder and I'm going to play the sound out just to ensure that we get to listen to what this sounds like. So I'm going to do... I'm going to right click and I'll open with my videos. This is a text read by Brian from Polly. Okay, we're going to try this again. This is a text read by Brian from Polly. Now we can see that this audio was converted by Polly because this audio basically tells us this is a text read by Brian from Polly. So in some cases, we might need to um, return this audio as a response to the user. So how are we going to do this? So one way to return this audio is we're going to return this as bytes. If you do not want to return this audio, there's um, there's a poly, there's a poly function that helps you. Um, I think that says client dot. Okay, I guess I can find that. There's a there's a poly function you can call that allows you to synthesize speech to your S3 buckets. So if i'm to go to um here and i go back to poly amazon poly now i can save my transcription or i would say my audio to s3 so rather than um having a situation where we kind of return this as um as a byte or write it to um, storage, we can decide to save it to S3. But in this video, we're not going to be saving it to S3. We're going to be returning it for our clients to get the data. So 
to do that i want to return it as a base 64 data so first i'm going to need to import base 64 yes so now that i have base 64 imported what i'm going to do is i'm going to enc i'm going to decode my audio and and i'm going to decode my audio and i'm going to encode it to base 64 so to do that let me i'm going to put this that will be um encoded encoded audio great so it says base 64 dot b64 encode audio dot decode ucf8 so what this does is it gives me my audio file as a byte so with that i can then return my audio as a byte file so if i'm to return my audio as a byte file we can then have a javascript client that fetches these bytes converts it to utf8 and to audio so that's how that works now let's return this as a response so first message message is going to be um trying audio conversion complete and i'm going to return data so data is going to be text which will be text or content output so um, i'm returning the apple format for the user back and lastly i'm going to pass in what we call audio that'll be audio that'll be encoded audio so vs code seems to be train an error and the reason why we're having this is because we're missing a colon so now that i have passed this i can say that our api is complete so let's save this and test that what we did works so what i'm going to do is i'm going to need to make a request again and i'm going to execute this okay yes so we can see that we have our audio conversion complete this is a text thread by brian from poly mp3 and we have our audio file returned as part so this is how you can make your own text-to-speech api using amazon poly so for adventure you have a part of your application that needs text-to-speech you can just make use of this it's quite simple it's quite basic it's too easy so that's a simple way of trying to get this done so if you find this tutorial helpful make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated with future tutorials so don't forget to like this video and leave any questions or comments and if you have friends that might need this be sure to share with them so thank you all for joining me today